what it, what does the future really look like? And I and I'm really thinking uh, five to ten years out. Sorry, that's my Alexa. I'll I'll start with a high level one, and I'll let Aaron give you a little more granular detail. And some of this is from our uh, experiences with uh, Juniper Network and their recent acquisition of MIST. But I think they're right on target there, with moving from uh, the world of device management and network protocol management, basically to user experience management and session and what data do I need to manage user experience. So starting to collect things and watch things like latency around session IDs and how long things databases take to respond. So I think you're going to see a lot of movement, especially as you start having an application like Aaron said that could be in your data center and multiple clouds. How do you control, how do you know if you're doing well or not? And ultimately it's the user application experience. So I think with the, all the clouds have a lot of the ML, machine learning and AI tools, and they can identify the things based on thresholds. So I think you're really gonna see that world. And then on the security side of that, you're gonna see more of the trust, but verify moving to the kind of zero trust when possible at certain gateways so that you can limit your exposure also. So those two things, the uh, user experience and zero trust together, and that's the security and the full stack things that we bring to the table. Yeah, and I kind of view it as we've seen this uh, going over the past couple of years is that decentralizing of services, being able to split apart uh, different services, no longer are we really supporting monolithic structures. We're really looking at applications that are agile, they can be changed very quickly. And I think that's gonna to continue to change. And we've seen that not only in the decentralization of compute, but we also see that in, um, in just the startup companies that are out there, they really do decentralize and it's really that just-in-time delivery. I think we're gonna see more trends keep going with that. And then as these compute services get cheaper, as, these, and as we think of the services that are offered, um, I was thinking about this today, the, the ability for me as a company, I, I can use Amazon satellite links now to be able to send out my application and utilize those to the fullest. So being able to have access to resources that I never even would have dreamed of, quantum computing, I can play with a quantum computer now in the cloud services, and I don't have to have you know, a million plus or however much it is to just even get started in that realm. So I can start looking at probability factors. So I think that by giving these services and the ability to get the um, get clients and to get companies in that have access to those, you're going to see a lot more utilization of the artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum computing, you know, all those buzzwords that we talk about now, but they're really going to become part of our day-to-day -day lives as we go forward. And I think that being able to access those resources, we're just going to have so much more just choices to be able to, you know, for, for things that compete with each other and being able to understand it. But I also think that we might get a nickel and dime to death after a while because we're going to have so many different services that we're paying for. 